In this video, we're going to revisit some of the statistical techniques that we've already seen, but in addition, we're going to look at how we can plot scatter graphs and how we can find the correlation between two sets of data. So let's begin with the scenario, and in this scenario, a production manager wants to see if the number of staff he employs on a given day has any correlation to the amount of overall production. Now you would probably expect that if you employed more staff on a given day that your production would increase, but there are potentially other factors at play such as whether people end up distracting each other and that type of thing. So we're going to look at this scenario and we're going to see if there's any correlation between the number of staff and the overall production. So in the top left hand corner we have some data and this data has been taken for a one week study. So we've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday on the left hand side. In the middle column we have the number of staff that are being employed on a given day and in the right hand column we have the overall production or the number of units that are being produced. Now for this data we're going to calculate the five things in the top right hand corner, the mean, the variance and the standard deviation and that's for both of our sets of data, the staff and the production. We're then going to calculate something new which is called the product moment correlation coefficient and all that really tells us is how closely linked these two sets of data are. And finally, we're going to calculate the formula for the regression line. And all we mean by a regression line is a line of best fit. We could essentially plot a scatter graph here with staff on one axis and production on the other axis. And the regression line would be the line of best fit through that data. Now, in the bottom left hand corner, I've included two formulas. And these are just included on the equations and information sheet for this topic. Now the first formula, x bar equals 1 over n times the sum between i equals 1 and n of xi. And that's for calculating the mean. And the one directly below that is for calculating the variance. Square rooting the variance gives us our standard deviation as we've seen before. Now because we're going to be going through this process for both of our columns of data, I'm going to call staff our x column and I'm going to call production our y column. So the first thing that I need to calculate is the mean number of staff. And what this formula here tells us is that in order to calculate the mean, we need to add all of our pieces of data together. That's what this sum between i equals 1 and n of xi means. And then multiply by 1 over n, where n is our number of pieces of data. So multiply in this case by 1 over 5, which is the same as dividing by 5. So x bar in this case, it's 22 plus 23 plus 26 plus 21 plus 18, all divided by 5, because there's 5 pieces of data there. Now, when I run that through the calculator, I get a value of x bar, the mean number of staff for that week, equal to 22 people, or 22 members of staff. Now I need to repeat that for y bar because in addition to the mean number of staff, I want the mean production. So again, I'm going to add up all of my pieces of data. 204 plus 201 plus 212 plus 194 plus 195. All divided by 5 again. And this time I get an average production rate of 201.2. Now I'm just going to add these two pieces of data in the bottom left hand corner and then we can create some space to calculate our variance on these two sets of data. So x bar is 22 and y bar is 201.2. Those are our solutions to part one, the mean of the two sets of data. So now I'm going to calculate the variance and standard deviation of those two sets of data. Now if we look at our formula here, we have a term which says we need to add up all of the values of xi minus x bar squared. So I need to add a column to my set of data. And this column is xi minus x bar squared, squaring the answer. Okay, what this means then is we're going to take each of our values of data in turn. We're going to subtract the mean and then we're going to square the answer. So let's give you an example here. We're going to take our first value of staff, 22. We're going to subtract the mean down here in the bottom left hand corner, also 22. 
and then we're going to square the answer. Well, this one's very straightforward because it's 22 minus 22 and then squaring the answer. It's just going to give us zero. Next, we have 23. So we're going to do, I'll write this one out, 23 minus 22, and then I'm going to square the answer. Well, 23 minus 22 is 1. 1 squared is just 1. So let's remove that and put our value of 1. Next, we have 26 minus 22, which is 4. 4 squared is 16. Next, we have 21 minus 22, which is minus 1. Minus 1 squared, or minus 1 times minus 1, just gives us 1. And finally, we've got 18 minus 22, which is minus 4. Minus 4 times minus 4 is 16. Now what our formula tells us is that we need to add all of those up. In the bottom left here, it tells us that we need the sum of all of those xi minus x bar squared values. So if I add those up, I get a value of 34. But we're not quite finished because we can see that there's another component to our variance. The formula says that sigma squared, and we're doing this for our x column of data, is 1 over n times that sum. Well, 1 over n in this case, with 5 pieces of data, is 1 over 5, which is exactly the same as dividing by 5. Multiplying by 1 over 5 is the same as dividing by 5. So that gives us a variance of 6.8. And from our variance, if we want our standard deviation, all we need to do is square root the answer above. So square root of 6.8, which gives 2.61. Now we can repeat that for our y column of data. So let's just create a little more space. And for our y column of data, we're going to have yi minus y bar all squared, exactly the same as before. And we're just going to repeat that exact same process. So first of all, we have yi, or our value of y, 204, minus the mean, 201.2, and then square the answer. Well, 204 minus 201.2 is 2.8. But then we need to square that, which gives us 7.84. Now we can repeat that for the next piece of data. We've got 201 minus 201.2, which is minus 0.2, minus 0.2 squared equals 0.04. Next we have 212, and again 212 minus 201.2 is 10.8. Squaring 10.8 gives 116.64. And so on down the column. Then we get 51.84. And finally we get 38.44. And we need to add all of those pieces of data up, and we get 214.8. And now we can calculate our y variance because sigma squared for the y data is 214.8 divided by the number of bits of data, which is 5, giving us a variance equal to 42.96. Now, what we really want is our standard deviation, so all we need to do is square root that answer, and we get 6.55 to two decimal places. So we have two things left to calculate. Up in the top right-hand corner, we have our product moment correlation coefficient, which was the fourth thing we wanted to calculate, and the formula for our regression line was the fifth.